thought it was a smart idea to put a dog in a compartment on an airplane. Girl, these white folks finna the tad this shit. Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black e neck on. So what's going on y'all, honey? I just am screaming at all the things that's going on, honey. We have to have a rest in peace moment. Um, it's not really funny, but uh, y'all have heard the story of United Airlines flight attendant telling um, this woman or man or whoever like, look, you need to put your dog in a compartment. You can't have it here, da da da. And then they open up and the dog gets dead. Like, I don't understand how the fuck that happened. I've never traveled with a dog before. That's something I don't get into, girl. I can only keep a dog for six months before I give it to somebody else. I just don't do it. Me and animals don't do well. That's probably why my ass have not been in a relationship in damn near four or five years. Like, long-term commitments, I just cannot do like that. Um, for me, I have to stay at home because I like to leave randomly. But this person brought a dog on a flight. And, and how a flight attendant is going to say, girl... Put this hole in a, uh, in the compartment. Like, what the hell? Like, how am I supposed to breathe with no air? The dog is dead. And y'all better know this white woman is going to sue the shit out of United Airlines for about $2 billion, girl. They are not playing. They are not. This woman is angry. And I will be, too. Like, I like. not only am I traveling, and I don't know where she was even headed. She's traveling. Ain't no telling where she's going. Probably on a vacation or something. No, now she got to carry around a dead dog. She can't even, like, if she was going home or not. Like, that's, I would be pissed off. I would be pissed off. Like, that is, that, that don't make any sense, girl. I, I, I don't understand how somebody thought that was a good idea. Like, who told her, like, girl, let go ahead and put your dog up there. Like, what the hell? Also, have you all went ahead and bought y'all on the Roaring Tour um, tickets? Girl, they said them tickets start at $400, and they said some of them hosts in the parking lot. Uh, will I be buying a Beyonce uh, on the run tour? It's not Beyonce, it's Beyonce and Jay-Z. Will I be buying a ticket? Probably not. I know the tour is coming to Atlanta, uh, you know, around my birthday, um, around my 31st birthday. I'm not sure if I'll be pretend, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be attending. I just, I'm not a concert person like that. I don't like to pay three, four, six hundred dollars for memories and shit. It depends on where I'm at. Um, honestly, the only thing I'm interested in right now is getting ready to go on the Broken Homeless Tour Part 2, okay? That's what we talking about, honey. Uh, my lease is up in May. I signed a short lease, you know, just to kind of, you know, get some stuff together. I'm thinking about probably going to New York City for probably a, a month. Stay up there for about a month just to tour, uh, just to have fun and work with these other folks. I've been able um, to make a lot of connections after, you know, the great buying situ um, situation and being a part of their um, panel discussion. I'm hoping you all seen it. Be to stay in tune to them every Thursday they have a new episode. Also, the episode that for the Culture Podcast was featured on will be up next week. Honey, said, what's like she need to reset it this week considering the situation with um, our girl Bessie DeVos and her dumb illiterate ass in that 60-minute interview. Like, But back on the Broken Homeless Tour, um, I'm thinking about doing that. I might get an Airbnb and just rent it out for a month. If y'all are interested in that, like how that works or something, please let me know, like comment and tell me that like, I think I just want to go out and travel. I think I would like to go to New York for a month. I might go visit my good girl um, who helped build my site, who built, basically built my site from scratch. I might go to where she stays. She's staying in Costa Rica. I heard it's really beautiful. Yeah, I'm spilling your tea. I might go there for a month, but I just want to go out and travel. Probably to the UK. I want to do a lot of things. I just don't want to be stuck in just one spot. I and I do want to go to um, LA later on. I just want to like do more things. I'm more interested in like helping people, um, you know, build their brands and, and, and work with them. And do, I want to do some behind the scenes type of situation. I love being in front of the camera. I love the podcast. I love everything that I do. I love kingofreeze.com. But I like to do things like behind the scenes and work and help some folks work on some projects. I have some, a whole bunch of ideas and I honestly need to... Uh, probably communicate or something with some folks who can help me put those um, ideas to work and fruition or whatever because I got a lot of stuff I want to work on girl it's a lot of things but but y'all let me know about the Broken Homeless Tour Part 2 how y'all feel about it girl she might be coming to a city near you okay but other things going on let's talk about Bessie DeVos and her terrible ass 60 Minutes interview we talked about that on the For The Culture Podcast make sure you're following um, For The Culture Podcast on all social media platforms that's The Culture Pod on Facebook I think Twitter and Instagram as well honey uh, we're just building this up and 
and making it sickening. The last episode we did through the great vine is already up on ForTheCulturePodcast.com. Y'all need to check it out, honey. It is everything. But if you have not checked it out or listened to the podcast, make sure you check it out, honey. Let us know how you feel about it. And shout out to all the people who have been listening to the podcast and getting their lives. We really appreciate you all helping us go from um, virtually 1,500 listens per episode to like seven, 8,000 listens per episode. We're steady growing and we're just that um, we're just that podcast. Someone sent us an email today and said that they just love how we're doing stuff and it's not like on just pop culture, but it's breaking down situations and stuff and things that are going on on a broader scale. Um, so we appreciate that. Thank y'all for supporting us. Bestie Duvall, 60 Minutes interview. We all know what's trash, honey. <laughs> Bessie DeVos since the Secretary of Education has been on the job for 13 months and she doesn't even know how to answer and say what she's been doing for these 13 months. She doesn't know her job title. She's a rich white woman that has profited off of charter schools that is interested in being a part of the solution when she benefits from the uh, from the fucking chaos. It makes no goddamn sense. I, I just... This administration has lost so many people in the last two weeks. They're firing people left and right, girl. They're firing folks before retirement. There is just so much mess going on that it's depressing. I really feel like, honestly, that all this stuff, am I the only one that feel like this is depressing the shit out of me? Like, I like to watch CNN to be, like, to be engaged in what stuff is going on. But at the same time, it is depressing and it's eating me alive and I need to go see a therapist. I've already made an appointment to see one. But I just, over all of the stuff that's going on I feel like damn and it's hard for me being a person that you know consumes this stuff to be able to talk about it and this is like my like this is my like this is my career this is what I do but at the same time I have to protect my mind so sometimes if I disappear just understand that I'm trying to reboot for myself so I can always be um, authentic and this great personality in front of this camera because I do not want it to get to the point where uh, I'm consuming all this and it has cons con consumed me in the process and I'm coming out in front of a drone giving y'all videos on everything that's going on every day and it's just it's just killing me so you won't be able to tell that it's killing me because the content is up there so I don't and then I fall out and y'all don't know what the hell is going on so sometimes I take a necessary break I took a break the beginning of this March and just made sure I just got some rest and did some thinking and shit and every time I do that I come back better than ever um, and I appreciate you all being patient because you all know um, Justin can put out a video about something that happened last week and we're still going to watch it out because we know uh, we're still going to watch it because you know we know it's going to be funny and it's going to be insightful and all that type of shit so I appreciate y'all we are at 96,000 subscribers girl we're 4 more thousand uh, subscribers before we be at 100,000 I want some ideas of things that we need to do before we get to the 100,000 mark like I honestly don't believe that that's even happening I really I'm still in shock right now but what would y'all like me to do for 100,000 mark what are y'all interested in me launching and doing for this um, breakthrough that will be happening probably in the next couple of months if nothing stupid happens. But let me know how y'all feel about that in the comment section. So since we're talking about Bessie DeVos, we have to talk about the student walkout 17-minute um, situation that happened today. Today is Wednesday where I'm recording this Wednesday afternoon slash evening. Um, students across America um, have walked out. High school students have walked out um, in honor of the situation that happened in Parkland. I, I love it and I love my girl Miss Taryn Hunter has wrote a sickening ass article about the difference between um, when black Black people protest and do things for them versus when uh, white America does stuff like that. And the reason why I say white America is because this is a scene as America. Like, this is America what it is. Like, this is it. And we've seen these kids, you know, not to take away from the work they've done, but they have went out and, you know, uh, did all this stuff. And, you know, it's getting national attention and people are getting them on these, these TV and they're getting all these interviews. They're getting all this and that. But when Black Lives Matter came together and people were protesting police brutality and all this, it came off like black people were angry. Instead of trying to fix the solution we were just so so many people were dedicated to this like why are they so angry I don't understand it versus this because they're challenging the government they're challenging the same systems and shit that uh, does whatever to them and that's what black people have been doing with these police brutality protests so I'm not understanding how is it when black people do some shit is angry or uh, y'all want to follow the law but y'all got kids out here doing it and it's like okay this is cute look at them standing up and stuff I'm a little bit confused and conflicted by it and I'm glad that Taryn broke it down in an article on kingofreeze.com y'all make sure y'all checking it out my contributors are everything on kingarees.com, honey. Shout out to all of them, honey. Um, make sure y'all are following them on their platforms as well because they have a lot of good insight and I appreciate them being part of the King of Reese family. Big Sean and Janae Aiko broke the internet. <laughs> no, they didn't. It's still alive. But they had the internet buzzing about alleged breakup that happened um, sometime this week. Uh, Janae Aiko had unfollowed um, Big Sean on um, Instagram 
and she just recently followed him back and there was a rumor that was originally reported on the Jasmine brand that the situation happened because of, you know, Big Sean was too cozied up with Nicole from the uh, Pussycat Dolls. They said she found out about it. She was livid. She was pissed off. She was angry. Um, and now she has responded on Twitter and you can check it out on kingareach.com and said, you know, that's not what it was. Da, 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 da. But something happened. Something happened. Big Sean even retweeted her tweet about it. Something happened because I, I think I think unfollowing people is the new breakup. Um, I think that's what it is like because I anytime I'm not talking or dating somebody or anymore, I don't have nothing to do with them. I don't follow their ass. That just is what it is. I mean, I don't want to see your ass on my timeline. You're not a part of my conversation anymore. That's the reason why I follow you. So if I ain't interested in seeing your shit no more, you gonna have to fucking go and it just is what it is. I don't give a damn how you feel about it, but that's just what I'm gonna do. I mean, I'm gonna do that anyway because that's just how I am. Um, and that's exactly what um, Janae probably did. She probably was pissed off about this shit, but hopefully they're working out. If they didn't, who gives a damn, okay? Now, I was not going to bring this up anymore, but this Monday, things got a real hot, flaming ass mess. And I'm not going to even, like, try not to address it. And I think that it's important to have this conversation because I want people to take away from it. No matter how many times people say, you need to respond to this, you need to drag this in there, you need to make a comment, or you need to respond to them, it will never stop. Sometimes it's just best to leave it alone and not talk about it because you are going to continuously be arguing with them and they're going to be benefiting from it. So it's just best not to respond to anything. I know that bothers a lot of folks, but I'm going to give you a prime example. The situation with the Queen's Court, T.S. Madison and Kaya. I know that shit is getting on T.S. Madison nerves. I know she's so sick of it because people keep tagging her in the shit. I ain't here for it. But um, Kaya was on her Instagram and she just said some real nasty stuff about trans women. Um, she was just very disgusting. But Kaya has always been like that. She is that person, you know, she kind of messed up and she don't, I don't know what it is about, she's just a hateful person and I wish she would get better, but she has proven herself to be this over the last whatever, 10 years, you know, it's okay. It's nothing wrong with learning, like, girl, I was saying some off the wall shit. I said some stuff that was off the wall. I'm like, ooh, shit. I had a conversation with my girl, Brianna, today about that. And, um, you know, she's gonna be a contributor on kingreads.com, but she said, just you have really grown over the last couple of years, and I'm, I'm appreciative of that. I can still learn and still some shit that I can do that I can be working on. But like I tell people, with great power comes great responsibility. You can't be out here, brrrr, and then you trying to hit somebody and you only hitting, you trying to hit this person, but you honestly hitting a whole bunch of other people that you did not intend on hitting. So we have to be careful with the way we use our platforms and the way we talk about things. Prime example, there are some people who call themselves bloggers and stuff, but seem to be trying to make money off of folks by downloading their content instead of putting it on YouTube. And that shit ain't right at all, but that person is not happy at all. That person is a very negative individual and it comes off in their skin and other things. It comes out of their pores. Um, and that's just is what it is like. You can't be a positive person. You can't expect to get out of this box uh, doing some of the things that you're doing. I'm telling you, the moment I got myself together, started dragging and said, just, you need to work on more, I started growing. The more I start to be able to, to, to do more and experience more. Um, and I have a long way to go, but I appreciate a lot of you all held my feet to the fire about some of the stuff I said when it came to Black Lives Matter, when it came to women, when it came to talking about uh, people with HIV. All of that, a lot of people have held my feet to the fire and still continuously hold my feet to the fire for other things. So I appreciate it. That's the only way I can grow. And I appreciate that because it makes me, like, keep me where I need to make sure I'm on the straight path to keep going, keep growing and stuff. Because, like, this platform is, like, it's growing. And I cannot be out here uh, putting out salacious type of um, content out and, and making money off of it like it's just not right so um, T.S. Madison made a big joke T.S. Madison made a lot of sense she said girl I'm gonna have to claim some of y'all hoes on my taxes because it seemed like y'all making so much money talking about me girl they have been making a coin honey talking about this situation and it's so tired I know we're tired of hearing about it but um, Kaya I just I've already talked about her in my dear Kaya video um, I don't think she's probably not seen it if she did it. Who, who gives a damn? The Queen's Court is coming back next Monday. I cannot wait to see what um, T.S. Madison got in store for us. I will be tuning in and checking it out. But Kaya, I'm just very disappointed. This content creator named Faith Howard did a video was so funny, honey. I loved it, honey. She took on Kaya's wig in a damn freestyle. I'm going to play a little bit for you. It's going to take us out, but y'all check it out. Make sure you check it out kingyreads.com. Make sure you stay in the tune for For The Culture Podcast. Podcast each and every Tuesday. I love y'all. I'll talk y'all later. Bye. Are you ladies stop entertaining this bitch?
Stop entertaining this bitch. All you ladies, stop entertaining this bitch. Stop entertaining this shit, bitch. Who the hell died and they made Kaya power of attorney? 17 years, you've been a bum the entire journey. Can't nobody put you on because you keep flipping and you turning on the people who be feeding you and you ain't even learning shit. You want respect, but you ain't earning shit. The only thing you really earn was your fucking debt. You 47 and your house ain't really furnished yet. But you concerned with everybody else, or you need to go concern the shit. You